Hey DC fans, Andrew Fantasia here and welcome back to Digital Charcuterie. Today we're talking about the first day of DC United Multiverse because the campaign DC United Multiverse. That's not what it's called, Andrew. DC Superheroes United uh, because the campaign just started and we're going to take a look at what's been happening so far. Before we do that, though, usual stuff. Hey, if you like us, if you like me, if you like the channel, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. Give some love to that subscribe button. And maybe if you're a fantasy fan or you know somebody who is, head on over to Amazon and do the only thing worth doing on Amazon, which is checking out my fantasy novels, We Were Wizards. That's what they're called. That's what they look like. And you can get them right now. The purple one is first, and then this one. They come in all the formats you could want. So, ebook, hardcover, paperback, me sitting in a rocking chair doing all the voices for you, right? It's all good. We'll work something out. But we were wizards. Check it out if you love fantasy. They're on Amazon right now. So DC Superheroes United is live here on Game Found. Um, I, forgive me, I might end up saying Kickstarter by accident throughout all this. If I do, I apologize. I'm just still getting used to Game Found. Uh, but it's live and of course it was funded very quickly. So congrats to Andrea and Tiago and all the developers at Spin Master and Cool Mini or not. Like, great job as always. Uh, we're going to take a look at everything that's been happening. I would normally do these videos at the end of the night to kind of go over what's been unlocked throughout the day. Unfortunately, the end of the night, I have way too many prior commitments. I just will not be able to get around to doing a video later, so I have to do it now, uh, just in the early evening, because that's the only chance I have. As the campaign goes on, hopefully I'll be able to do it more in a end of the night wrap up sesh. But no more of that. You're, you don't want to see me. You didn't come here to look at a bald guy. You came here to look at this beautiful game. So let's head over to the game found page together and take a look at that. All right. So here we are at the main page of DC Superheroes United. Now, this is my second time doing anything on game found. It's been so long since the last time I was on game found. So I'm still getting used to the controls of where everything is. It's similar to Kickstarter, but not identical. So just, uh, just bear with me if I seem like I don't know where I'm going or what I'm doing, but, um, I'm going to scroll down a tiny, tiny bit. So first of all, as we see here, the core box has got a beautiful, shiny little logo there and then it's showing off all the characters in said core box which we expect obviously and then there's all the goodies challenges all the yeah everything everything we expect tokens lovely uh and then it shows off down here the teen titans box which uh is probably gonna weigh a bunch because of that giant demon who resides inside and we get a, another good look at all of the minis and all the cards again beautiful stuff oh we finally get to see the uh start the master playing cards for deathstroke because i don't think we saw too many of them last time cool and then there's mr trigon 14 centimeters tall i gotta check that i gotta check to see how tall galactus is because now we know 14 centimeters is the height of trigon so somebody out there get measuring figure out if he's taller than a sentinel and hopefully he's not taller than galactus but as we scroll down here you can see our two um pledge levels so far i'm sure there's more to come but down here we have our super friends pledge which is 65 dollars uh and it includes the core box and our first exclusive which we'll get to in a second and the titans pledge which is a hundred dollars which includes all of that plus the titans box plus another exclusive which we'll get to in a second so price wise it's the same as multiverse but one thing that's different from multiverse i should mention and let me just jump up to the top real quick here this was funded, it reached its goal in 27 minutes and 44 seconds, which is great. Um, I've just, I looked back at my uh, my notes from Multiverse and comparing it to Multiverse, Multiverse actually got funded in 14 minutes. Uh, so much quicker than this. And I'm surprised because this is, you know, Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, this is top level characters. Whereas the Multiverse thing was just deep cuts after deep cuts. So I'm surprised this actually took as long as 27 minutes, but hey, we're here, it's funded. I ain't complaining, I don't think anybody else is. So let me jump down to the add-ons. Okay, here we go. So the Super Friends Pledge is called as much because it includes the Wonder Twins and Gleek. Now, I am not a betting man, but if I was, I never in a million years would have imagined that 
the first thing out of the gate that you get as a crowdfunding exclusive would have been the Wonder Twins. Oh my god, this is such a deep cut. It's it's a deep cut to the point where it's like a joke amongst DC fans, like, ah, the Wonder Twins. <laughs> but here we are, and not only are they here, not only does Zan's miniature have water on it, not only are Zan and Jaina bumping fists, but if you look at the backs of their cards here, their cards also bump fists. Come on. Come on. That is so much fun. And then to top it off, Gleek is also there as his own little playable character. Out of the gate, they're going so deep with deep cuts that a blue monkey character that I have never heard of is one of the first ones in the running. And look right here, an exclusive pair of inseparable sibling heroes and their Elastamonk super friend. This is the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Um, so that's that. That's the Wonder Twins. Then, of course, this shows here that there are dozens of exclusive stretch goals waiting to be unlocked, which we will obviously see over time. Uh, but as I scroll down here, you can see that underneath the Titans box is another little bonus, and that is Power Girl, an exclusive Kryptonian hero with enough power to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any foe. Power Girl, a big, big DC character, and very happy to see her here. I thought she was a clone of Supergirl, um, but uh, Dave, Diversion Architect, he I think he pointed out she's actually from, she's Supergirl from another uh, universe. She's a multiversal version of Supergirl or so, yeah, it's, <laughs> comics are complicated, folks. I'm not going to pretend like I understand all of them, but there's Power Girl. She's different from Supergirl, though, so I'm still really looking forward to seeing Supergirl uh, as a stretch goal. And I'm going to go ahead and make the guess right now that not only will Supergirl be a stretch girl, stretch girl, not only will Supergirl be a stretch goal, but she will end up being the most prominent hero on the stretch goal box artwork. Okay? I am locking that guess in right now on July 10th, 2024. And we probably won't see that artwork until at least next January. But I can promise you She'll be the most prominent character there. Uh, but anyways, let's go down to the stretch goals, speaking of which, and take a look at them. So, Zan and Jaina and Gleek, uh, the Wonder Twins, here's a look at their cards. They will have the Wonder Twin Powers Activate card, uh, where if you're in the same location as Jaina, you may perform a double wild. Uh, that's just incredible. It's I can't believe they added the Wonder Twins so soon. Zan can turn into water, Jaina can turn into animals. So we have a second character who can mimic animals. Team her up with Beast Boy, and then maybe one day team the two of them up with Vixen and Animal Man, and you've got Wild Kingdom united. And we'll take a look quickly at Gleek, who's an alien monkey hailing from the planet of Exoria. Like, so much fun. So much fun. Uh, and he's got some of those uh, those new green features there, which I think means, I think the eyeball icon means it's there to remind you to like, hey, keep an eye on the storyline because you, you need to see this card because it's going to be important later. So for example here, Gleek is the bucket holder. He holds Zan in a bucket. If you are in the same location as both Zan and Jaina, when Jaina moves, she can bring you and Zan with her. Outstanding. His cards are beautiful. Gorgeous, colorful, united stuff. And then the first sort of real stretch goal, stretch goal that got uh, unlocked. I mean, Wonder Twins, yeah, they were kind of like the opening thing. But then the first one that we sort of jumped into here was Wildcat. Ted Grant, member of the Justice Society, who I did not expect to see in a first season of DC United. But here we are. My expectations have, have clearly been wrong. He's got something similar to Batman's Indomitable Will. He's got a few lives left. It says if you're about to be KO'd during a villain turn, you may remove from the game the top card of your hero deck to avoid discarding your last card. And that's very Wildcat. Wildcat is a boxer. He's always getting beat up. Every time you see him, he's got like a bandaged nose and cuts and bruises. Uh, he's just completely always taking a beating. So the idea of losing the top card of your deck in order to not be KO'd, that is a perfectly thematic way to sum up Wildcat. His card colors are beautiful. That's what I love to see. Uh, so he's a boxing vigilante. Uh, and then our first villain stretch goal was unlocked. Black Mask. And oh my god, Chibi Black Mask is phenomenal. This is my favorite model we have seen so far 
uh, in this whole campaign. He's on a briefcase full of money. He's got this uh, dagger thing. And I mean, there's his dashboard. There are his cards. Now, he's got a cool feature where he's kind of like Enchantress. Because it says here, look, you'll see right here, four threat cards. Not six, four. So he's got four threat cards. And then the other two threat spaces are going to be taken up by henchmen. But he doesn't have his own henchmen. Look at this uh, paragraph down here. Black Mask's threats extend his criminal empire to most locations, filling them with thugs and using them to attack the heroes. Uh, blah, 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 blah. At the start of the game, Black Mask even hires a couple henchmen from any other villain's deck, as long as they're not tied to specific mechanics from that villain, creating a unique challenge every time. So yeah, Black Mask can steal other henchmen. You could theoretically have Modok as his henchman. <laughs> that is just wild. Uh, and I'll finally be able to live out my dream of playing as Ewan McGregor in a board game. And then as we move up a little bit more, we see that the Complications Challenge has also been unlocked. Uh, we saw that in the Annihilation box, and it looks to be about the same. Uh, and I think that's something we can totally expect to see in this campaign. There's a lot of repeats of just sort of the fundamental little bits and bobs, right? The characters are going to change. The gameplay and the bits and bobs that make the gameplay tick, they're going to stay the same. Don't fix what ain't broken. Then moving on, we unlocked Blue Beetle and Booster Gold. Uh, this is the Ted Cord version of Blue Beetle, so we might see Jaime Reyes in the near future. But that is classic Blue Beetle. I love that. Uh, and we see him here. That Those are, so far, those are my favorite hero cards that we have seen in DC Superheroes United. Look at those. It's the, the color is perfect. Whoever designs these cards, it's like, they know the exact right colors of the hero to mix and match into the cards, and they know what I like to see, and they do it every single time. And just like with the Wonder Twins, it looks like Blue Beetle is going to work in tandem with Booster Gold, because if you are in the same location as Booster Gold, you may do a heroic or attack action. So a lot of partnering people up, which... I normally don't do because I play random all the time, but that'll be a fun change of pace. And then he has two equipment cards. He's got the bug. The bug is just such a fun vehicle. I love the bug. And then his gun, which looks like a blow dryer. I can't remember the name of it. What does it say? His blue beetle gun, so it can stun henchmen. And then the bug can transport you and another hero, and then you can also do actions where you go. But, you know, you can't have blue beetle without his buddy Booster Gold. So yeah, they threw him in right into the mix. Looking at the United Chibi version of Booster Gold really makes me happy. There's his mini. He's got the star. His card colors are perfect again. Time travel card. Uh, I'm assuming that's going to be his... Maybe his starting hand card. I don't know. Because time travel is kind of his thing. But what a cool mechanic. During any of your turns, flip this card to use the symbols at the bottom of the hero card in the storyline, immediately preceding this card. So maybe it's your starting hand card, but it's something you're going to want to hang on to until the right moment, right? Wait till the hero before you plays like a double wild or something, and then that time travel card is going to come in real handy. And he's got an equipment card too. He's got Skeets, who will let you do a star action on your or an adjacent location, or heal you if you have less than three cards. Uh, I wonder if they're going to throw in a mechanic where Skeets betrays you if you've read 52. Um... Hopefully I didn't just spoil that for you, but yeah, sometimes Skeets is not the greatest guy in the world. And there's the big child version where he's painted, but Blue Beetle and Booster Gold are in United now. And then finally, where I am at right now is we are waiting for Black Manta to be unlocked. And Black Manta is going to come with his dashboard, his 12 master plan cards, six threat cards, and three water tokens. And he's got the beautiful water effect on his mini which looks so good when you put it up against the red which is why marvel united if you want to hurry up and make that hydro man character so we can see that mini that would be awesome making black manta chibi must have been a challenge because he already has such a huge helmet so that must have been fun in the design process there is his dashboard not a lot of colorful dashboards yet between him and trigon and black mask we're just seeing a lot of very basic colors on the dashboard so i hope we get some more colorful ones in the future some more vibrant villains uh so it says here black manta is obsessed with exacting his revenge against aquaman so he's always going after the oh so aquaman must be one of the heroes facing him hmm i'm not sure i love that to be honest i am not sure if i love that it's thematic for sure but uh, I think I would find a way, a homebrew way to get around that. Uh, but look closely. 
Look at his dashboard right here. It says when Aquaman is KO'd, he takes one KO token. But look right underneath that. When Mira is KO'd, Aquaman must discard one card. Mira is going to be in this season. That's kind of a dead giveaway then. He also has a very unique KO feature where if he KOs someone, he steals an equipment from them and puts it on his dashboard. That's very Black Manta. He's also got this very tough henchman, the Shaggy Man. It says here, the only way you can defeat him is to do four attack things at once on a single turn. And he moves around and deals damage too. I have no idea who this character is. It's the first time I've ever seen Shaggy Man. But yeah, this thing, Aquaman must be one of the heroes facing him. That's not ideal for me. I think what I would end up doing is when I play, this is completely just hypothetical because I don't even know if I'm going to get this game yet. Um, but if I was to play and I was to draw Black Manta as the villain that I drew, I would select one of the heroes that I have drawn and use them as a proxy for his Aquaman things. So for example, if I draw Superman, Spider-Man, and Storm, right? I could say, okay, anytime Black Manta's cards mention Aquaman, I'll just have that target Storm instead. So it's like he's hunting Storm today. I think that's the way I would do it. Just because the idea of having to break out Aquaman every time you break out Black Manta, it's thematic, but it's not the way I like to play United. Oh, and of course, the Metal Two-Face coin is also available for $5 extra if you did not follow beforehand. So that's where they are with that. Let me check the updates really quickly here. Uh, Wonder Twin Powers activate. All right, we're going to read this in real time together because I've not read this update yet. Oh, okay, it's just showing you their descriptions, just in case we missed them. Oh, and Power Girl, because we did not see her descriptions. Hey, and this is telling us all about her. Originally hailing from Earth 2, that's her. Kara zor found herself on Earth 1 after surviving a cataclysmic event that rippled across the multiverse. She was similarly sent to Earth just as Krypton was about to explode, but arrived only much later as Kara's ship held her in prolonged stasis. There are her cards. She's got heat vision, so I wonder how, how they're going to handle her Kryptonian. I see a physiology thing here, so she might have similar cards to Superman. Uh, her invulnerability allows her to ignore damage and perform attacks or heroic actions when she does. Basically, her Kryptonian physiology ensures she can handle any situation. With her heat vision, she can attack an adjacent location, or she can charge her super breath card so she can flip it when needed in order to rescue all civilians and blow thugs away. All right, so very similar to Superman, and that's totally understandable. All right, so Black Manta has officially been unlocked. So now it's just a matter of waiting to see who else, if anybody, becomes the next stretch goal. So I'll tell you what, we'll do that together. Uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long, but we'll wait and see who the next stretch goal is right before we end the video. Uh, this will happen in real time. And obviously, when you're watching this, it'll have already advanced even more. So Power Girl, I'm assuming, is going to, like I said, be just like Iron Lad. She's going to come in her own little box uh, when you get this game on your doorstep in four years or however long it's going to take. Uh, I would assume that people will get this... I would love to hope that people would get this in like October 2025, but we all know things happen. So I wouldn't be surprised if people got this in May 2026. In fact, that's probably where I would put my money. I would say May 2026. And the reason I would say so late is because something that was said on Monday, I think it was on Monday, the day they showed off the Titans. Uh, essentially, the day they revealed the Titans. At the very end of that video, the guy who was moderating the video, whose name I can't remember, he made a comment where he said, this is the biggest campaign you guys have ever done. Uh, or at least one of the biggest campaigns you guys have ever done. And I forgot totally to mention that in my coverage of that video, but that's a bold statement. So unless that was just hyperbole to get people hyped. This is going to be even bigger than the multiverse campaign, which was so massive that we're still waiting for it. I'm curious when all is said and done exactly how big a thing we're looking at here. I'm going to refresh the page and see if we have 21 updates instead of 20. No, we are still at 20. So, oh, no, there we go. Splash. We got Mira. Wow, there she is. Yeah, I mean, Makes sense, they just revealed her anyway. Ah, oh, her cards are beautiful. Queen of Atlantis, if you are in a location with a water token, do a wild action. Perfect. Cards perfect. Mini perfect. Lots of water. She's got a big wave. And she's got her Clarion, um, which is an item. Use on your turn three attacks against a single target in your location. So we've unlocked Black Manta, and now we have Mira. She is. Uh, she was raised from childhood to become the perfect warrior. 
A deep hatred for Atlantis was inoculated into her, and she was taught hydrokinesis with the sole purpose of assassinating the king of Atlantis. However, when she met the ruling king of Atlantis, she was surprised that he was a hero as opposed to a tyrant. Also, he had a six-pack, which she probably liked. <laughs> I'm adding that. That's not here. Uh, she grew infatuated with Aquaman and abandoned her mission, joining him in the fight to protect the oceans and humanity. Wow. Now, Mira has an evil sister, I think, named Siren. I hope we see her. Uh, so from the looks of things, the stretch goal box is going to have a lot of these Aqua characters, which means we probably won't get that Atlantis Awakes expansion that I predicted we would get. She's Aquaman's wife, uses her hydrokinetic powers to place water tokens in three different locations. These will help her use her Atlantean abilities to their full extent when she's in one of those locations. Using her different cards, she may be able to perform all sorts of different actions for free in these aquatic places, or even draw extra cards so she could be starting a turn with five in hand. Oh, wow. She may possess the Clarion, a conch imbued with the life force from the Trident of Poseidon, capable of creating a connection to the Death Force, powerful enough to send a god to the graveyard. Wow. That is a really dramatic way of describing that piece of equipment. So that's it. Mira is next to be unlocked. All right, and there it is. That's all we have so far on DC Superheroes United. We are this close to unlocking Mira. Uh, I had her on my wish list for season one in my hypothetical DC United season one that I made all the way back last year. So if you're part of the Meeple Monkey Facebook group, and if you're not, you should be, um, he has made bingo cards for everyone with all of the choices I made for that season one. So you can check those out and maybe that's on your bingo card. So that'll do it for today, but I'll see you here next time for whatever comes next in the master plan as we continue to make the wait for Marvel United Multiverse a little bit shorter and a whole lot sweeter. See you next time.